I'm Daniel Cash, and this is my presentation on skills and communication. So, firstly, I wrote down different communication methods, and I came up with visual, audio, and written. And you can obviously have a combination of both. You can have audio and visual, such as videos and cameras and stuff, but I just wrote them down separately. I wrote down all the different skills I've learnt, like so all the different softwares I've used and like what you use them for. So Photoshop, you use it for editing the photos using various tools, and you can also repair photographs using the clone stamp tool and the healing brush tool. And I discussed the pros and cons of each of these different programs. So the pros of Photoshop are that it's industry standard photo editing software with a variety of features. The toolbar is clearly laid out so like you can easily find it. It's just right there on the side. And if you mess it up, there's just an easy way to get it back to default settings by resetting essentials. Um, it's also very similar to other Adobe packages in the way that it's laid out. So if you learn the layout of one Adobe package such as Photoshop, it's very easy to then know where the toolbar is on Illustrator, so it's one less thing to learn when you're learning various Adobe packages. You don't need to remember the layout for each one. Adobe Premiere was another software I learned to use, and I use this for adding my footage that I've recorded to the timeline, and then editing it, and editing the audio on the timeline and then when it's done you export the footage into a mp4 file and you have to select the bitrate you want it at. So the uh, pros of Illustrator that it's again industry standard video editing software, the fundamentals and the basics of the program are straightforward. The cons are that it's time consuming to edit and there are limited effects if you want loads of effects you're going to have to use After Effects and I think that Adobe should incorporate After Effects and Premiere into one program. Adobe InDesign was another software I used. I used this for creating posters and magazine articles and I used fill text to see how the article would fit with the picture. Fill text is basically uh, Latin text just filled out throughout the page so you can see how the layout would look with text. Uh, some of the pros to this are that it's industry standard layout software straight with straightforward features and it's similar to other Adobe packages. I couldn't really find any cons with the program because I'm not that experienced with it. I'd say the only con is that it could be complicated to use for first timers and that it's time consuming. Adobe Illustrator is a graphics design software which I use to create graphics designs and logos. An example of a logo I created was the Adobe Illustrator logo and we did this using various tools and basic shapes. So the pros of Illustrator are that it's industry standard graphic designing software. It has advanced features and lots of variety in the different graphics that can be created but a con for me is that it can be complicated to use. A lot of graphics are made up by basic shapes, so you have to draw a lot, and I find drawing difficult. Adobe Audition is an industry standard audio recording, mixing, editing software. Uh, I personally like this software a lot because it's very easy to use, straightforward, and easy to edit and get quite a few effects. Also, if you're not familiar with all the different effects you can use a lot of presets and they're uh, very good so you don't need to fiddle around with the settings of effects and wonder what everything does you can sort of play around with the different presets and if you like it you can apply it if you don't like it you don't have to apply it so it's just great being able to use a variety of presets um, and it's got a great range of effects I personally don't have any cons apart from the fact that it could be considered a fairly basic system although industry standard if you're trying to edit music and a lot of things like that then it could be considered basic but for pure audio editing it's fairly advanced but for beat mixing and music then I'd suggest using FL Studio or Pro Tools 
although it can be done in Adobe Audition, it's much harder. We've also used cameras throughout this course and microphones. Uh, some of the cameras we've used are the JVC. The JVC are big video cameras and they're good quality, but they can be fairly hard to use and look intimidating if you're not familiar with how they work as they're very heavy and big cameras and they're also very slow in post-production when you upload your footage due to the file format they're quite slow whereas with a Canon DSLR camera it's again a good quality camera it's smaller and straightforward although the internal microphone is much better on a JVC but you could solve the problems with the internal mic by using an external microphone such as a Rode with a boom stand where one person would just stand with headphones and the microphone on a boom pole and that would then save the issue of bad quality sound coming from the internal microphone. The DSLR is a smaller camera and more designed for photographs rather than videos but it does work really well with videos as well and you can hold it without the tripod because it wouldn't create a lot of camera shake. Ots is an uh, I used to engineer radio shows at Radio Harrow. Um, it's a fairly straightforward system, but it is quite prim primitive. It's fairly basic and you can't do a lot with it. It's basically like in, you have a list of categories in music and you can cue your songs and obviously play them in deck A and deck B, there are two decks. Um, so there's only really one way to use arts, there's not a lot of variety in the way you can use it, but it is straightforward and great for beginners, so I'd suggest if anyone was going into engineering radio shows, they start with arts as it's a great system to start with, and you can still engineer a pretty good radio show on it. Um, so it's also quite efficient as it tells you how long your queue is. So like it tells you on the queue at the end of the list, if you were to play it right now, this is when it would end. So, and it will like update. So like if you talk instead of play a song, it will update and say like, you are now gonna finish five minutes later than you were. But Myriad, which I'm going to talk about on the next slide, is a lot more advanced. Myriad, again, is also a system used to engineer radio shows, um, which I have used at Radio Harrow. I've been engineer trained on it uh, briefly. It is quite complicated to use at first, but it does get easier. There are a lot of varieties in the way you can use it. You can either use the log feature or the pad feature, or just drag things straight into the decks from the cart walls. So, there's also four decks on Myriad, whereas on OTS there are two decks, and there's a keyboard to go with it, so like you can assign um, different carts to a number, so like, say you have a dry voice that you want to play over the instrumental part of a song, instead of actually dragging that dry voice down to the deck, you can just press the number or letter on the keyboard you've assigned to that jingle or dry line or whatever and it will play. Uh, the keyboard uh, looks like a normal keyboard pretty much except for at the bottom of it it has play one, play two, play three, play four and go. Uh, play one plays deck one and play two plays deck two and so on. The go button will just play the first song queued up so the most efficient way to use Myriad is with the log feature as it's a clearly laid out queue of everything and you, it does have an auto DJ feature. It's automatically on auto DJ until you put at a certain point, you click and it will create like a red block sort of and that's when it will stop auto DJing and nothing will play after that. So you can have a chance to talk, whatever, and it will also tell you whether you're underrun, so you would create a clock of how long your show is, so if your show's an hour, it'll tell you whether you're overrun, underrun, or just right. If it's overrun, the Myriad will actually take songs out or fade songs as necessary to get you back on time at the end. So if you're overrun, it's not a massive issue in Myriad, 
whereas in Ox it doesn't have that feature and you have to do everything manually. Myriad's also great as you don't have to remember to put back to put it back to auto DJ after you change it to manual. So it's quite good. You can also eject songs from the keyboard and you can create hooks of songs so if you wanted to explain what's coming up in your show it's very easy to do that when you put the files into myriad when you import them you create a hook so a certain you mark in and out at a certain point of the song and then when you play the hook of that song it'll play that so it might be like a five seconds of a song to show what's coming up uh, so that's another great fit feature which OTS doesn't have, but the feature I like the most in Myriad that isn't in OTS is the intro times. So what you do when you import a file or a music file to Myriad, you will mark sort of sort of marking in and out the intro times. So you listen to the song or look at the audio waves and see where the instrumental part of the song starts. To where the instrumental part of the song ends and you mark those two points and then myriad will then count the seconds between those between those points so when you have a song like any song for instance you put it in the deck it will then count down with how many instrumental seconds it has so you can talk over the instrumental and you can see a countdown of when the words are going to start so you know to put the mic down and stop talking Whereas in Otch you don't have that and you kind of have to guess where the audio is starting, uh, where the words are starting and when the instrumental ends, um, which obviously you can do by listening to it, but even if you do know it, it's hard to like count down in your head, whereas Myriad it's showing right in front of you and it also gives you like an easy remaining time. So on Myriad when it gets to about the last 20 seconds it will start counting down in like bigger in big so on the deck it will show the number in red counting down so you can see how many seconds are left of the song so it's got very advanced features and obviously there are a variety of ways to use it uh, I really say the only con I have with it is it can look intimidating to use for first timers because there are so many different ways to use it the pad feature is fairly simple, but when you get to the log, which is the most efficient way to use the software, it can look intimidating and complicated. I'd like to learn how to use Myriad efficiently with the log feature. I got engineer trained to it on Saturday, so I'm not yet familiar with all the features on the program. And the log feature does take a bit of time to get used to. But once you're used to it, I've been told that it's a great software and really great way to do your show. And I've also witnessed people using this to do their shows and it works really well. So I'd like to learn how to use the log feature more efficiently so my shows will be more efficient.